My goodness, you look so beautiful. Give yourself a cheer, it's amazing. Anachnu nitzavim kulanu hayom. We're all stood here today, the British, the Israelis, the religious, the secular, the old, the young, the men, the women, to say that this is wrong. And I know that within the government of the State of Israel today, there are those who think that we protest because somehow we lack love for the State of Israel or our people or the traditions of our faith. And that is such a lie. In synagogues across the Jewish world, just yesterday, we read these verses about who needed to hear about the first state of Israel. The state of Israel that Moshe Moses was talking about from the banks of the Jordan River. And Moshe said, Atem nitzavim hayom kulchem. Roshechem shivtechem. Ziknechem shotrechem. Kol ish Yisrael tapachem nashechem. Vegercha shabakarev machanecha. Mechotev etzecha ad shoev memecha. You are all part of this. You heads of tribes, you elders, every man, woman, and child, even the refugee in the midst of the camp, even the wood chopper, even the water carrier. That's the list that Moses thinks it's important to bring together about the project to create a sustainable state of Israel. And it has to be right that a state of Israel requires everybody the Jew, the Gair, the refugee, the Arab citizen, the Palestinian non-citizen, the straight, the gay, and those wonderful human beings for whose such distinctions are just too binary. We are all part of this story. Because I don't care if you have 59 electoral mandates, or 64 electoral mandates, or 119 electoral mandates, a democracy is not a place where the powerful get to do whatever they want. Democracies are places where the powerful are checked. Democracies are places that care more about doing what is good than allowing the powerful to do whatever they want. Democracies are places where there are counterbalances on the exercise of power. So everybody, even the chopper of your wood and the drawer of your water knows that they are loved and they are protected and their inviolate rights as a human being in the creation of the image of God are acknowledged. And for a democracy to take the opportunity of an elected majority to govern on behalf of only some of its people is worse than wrong. It is, and Moses said this and we read this in synagogues across the world yesterday, that is the thing that brings curse and destruction to our people, and God forbid, to our states. I had the opportunity to share this Torah, this teaching, with the elected Khaber Knesset Minister Amichai Shikli on his visit to London this week. He had the decency to look very uncomfortable. I think it's fine, by the way, it's fine for Jews to protest against powerful people who are doing wrong. We've been protesting against powerful people doing wrong since the time of Pharaoh. Great miracles have been wrought by dint of Jews protect protesting against powerful people doing wrong. So how do you know? How do you know if you are a powerful person? Let's say a minister or a prime minister. How do you know if the thing you want to do as a person of power is not just what you want to do but is indeed good. The answer 
The religious answer, the Jewish answer is abundantly clear. If you are a powerful person and you care about doing good and you want to know how to do good, make space for judicial review. When God, the creator of heaven and earth, when God who had more mandates than we can possibly imagine, when God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, God made space for judicial review. Should I hide from Abraham what I want to do? And Abraham responds. And the rabbinic term is he responds as a son Goria, as a defense attorney. And this is what Abraham said in the Supreme Court of all Supreme Courts. How dare you, says Abraham before God. How dare you, judge of all the world, not act with justice. And God stands there and God takes it. And the book of Genesis records God submitting to Abraham's judicial review not once, not twice, not three times, not four times, not five times, but six times. Because God knows that judicial review is at the heart of how you ensure that the power you have is used for the good. It's one of the great stories of our faith tradition. And the idea that there are rabbis who give a heksha, rabbis who to support the attempt to dismantle the power of courts, the idea that there are rabbis who are complicit in this act of self-destruction staggers me. It's a busha. And to my fellow Rabonim, and I can see several of you here today, and it's a busy week for all of us, and a very busy week for Rabonim. To my fellow Rabonim and Manhigim and leaders, wherever you are, I encourage you to speak up, to teach this Torah of Moshe, of Abraham, to learn from Yitro, who had the courage to say clearly and in public, Lotov Hadava Asher Ata Oseh, this thing that you are doing is not good. I want to close with a bracha, a kavanah, a prayer for this vitally important week for Israel as a state and as a people as we stand on the cusp of this new year. If you don't like the word God, choose whatever you like. But God, source of compassion, of justice and power, send your blessings to all your people. To your people who are protesting, fill our hearts with strength and resolution send to us the Hamads and the Ahmads that Moses offered to Joshua. And to your people who are invested with electorally mandated power and are erring, open their hearts to the need to serve all their people, even unto the chopper of wood and the carrier of water. Bless them with the understanding that great democracies need powerful courts to ensure that power is always used for good and for blessing. Shana Tova, and thank you.